we need to do is believe when we ask. Amen? We need to believe when we ask. Not just ask and walk away. That's not faith. Faith is to believe when we ask. He says, when you ask, believe, doesn't he? Believe. That's faith. And, and, and in this area of believing, uh, uh, when we ask, there's three areas because faith has to do with spiritual vision so that you can spiritually see. Faith has to do with to follow because if you believe, you follow. And faith has to do with you act because when you act, when you ask something, if you believe it, you act on it. Has everybody got it? And so many times the enemy tries to prevent us from walking in faith. In fact, the word tells us that in the latter days, many will be, uh, will be deceived and walk away from the faith. And I want to go to Genesis chapter 1 this morning. In verse 14, we were talking about the weapon of deception. Because deception is a weapon. And deception is Satan's greatest weapon. Amen? And in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, if you'll read it with me. Is everybody there? Let's speak it out. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let there be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Very powerful because in this he said that he created. Now we know that in the physical realm, he created the sun, which gives light during the day, and the moon, which gives light during the night. But the moon is not the light, is it? The moon is only a reflection of the light. It's a reflection of the light. So in this, it, now it reflects to give light, but it doesn't give the fullness of light. But if you look at the moon in the, in, at night, it looks like it's light. But it's really not the light. And he said he was going to make these two great lights. One would rule by day and one would rule by night. And we're talking about something physically, but I'm telling you, God speaks spiritually. When God speaks, it's in three-dimensional and in this, what I want to share with you today is there's something about reflection. You know, we were talking about deception as a weapon, but there are deceptions of reflection. And in these deceptions of reflection is what people perceive. Because one of the things that we must do is go beyond the reflection of things into the truth. Is everybody okay? Go to Genesis 2.15. Is everybody there? Deception's a reflection. Let's speak it. Then the Lord God took the man and what? Is anybody there? Come on now. Genesis 2. I didn't say 20. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden 
to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may what? Freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Why? Because the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was a reflection of light. It wasn't the true light. So everybody got it. Why? What did the knowledge of the tree and the good and evil represent? The serpent. Amen? Represented the serpent. Now, isn't Satan or Lucifer, he tries to proclaim himself as the what? The light. But he isn't the light, is he? He's only a reflection. So everybody got it? In other words, he is the ruler of darkness, isn't he? And Jesus is the ruler of light. So in this, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a reflection of the tree of life because it is a reflection of light. But this is deception's reflection, isn't it? Is everybody okay? Go to Genesis 3. In verse 1. Now the serpent was what? More cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God made. He's more cunning. In other words, God, when God created Lucifer, he gave him great wisdom. And he said to the woman, what? Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And a woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? Lest you die. Now we know that God doesn't warn us just one time, does he? Because we know that he told Adam, Don't eat of the tree, you're going to die. But the woman said, You can't even touch it, because the Lord warned them a multitude of times. And, and, and in this... She knew that if she was to eat of this tree, she would die, didn't she? But what was she dealing with? Deception's reflection. Because it was trying to reflect itself as the light. It was trying to reflect itself as truth. Does everybody get this? It was trying to reflect itself as truth. In verse 4, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Isn't the devil a liar? Amen? So he told a woman that God's lying to you. That was, he was trying to implement that God is lying to you, isn't he? For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be what? Open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. But what was going to happen when they ate of it, their eyes would be closed and they would never see the Lord again or the serpent. Because they were able to see them now. They had entered another realm. Everything would change and they would become blind to the unseen realm that was influencing them. Is everybody all right? So when the woman saw that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate and she also gave to her husband with her and he ate. So in other words, that reflection she believed. So everybody got it. And when she ate of it, she became blinded. Her husband became blinded. Everything changed. Go to verse 13. So now the Lord steps in and he says, okay, what happened? What did you all do here? And of course, Adam blamed his wife. And his wife blamed the serpent. And in verse 13, and the Lord said to the woman, what is this? Have you, what, you have, what have you done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I what? The serpent did what? Deceived her and she ate. The serpent deceived me and I ate because of the reflection of the light. But it was not the true light. The life of man in this realm was guided by reflection. Everything you and I see is a reflection, isn't it? In fact, your eyes... What they see, there's a reflection off of something, isn't it? In other words, when you see it, it comes back to us, doesn't it? Everything is a reflection. Is everybody okay? Everything here is a reflection. We live in a realm of reflection. 
But we've got to begin to look through the reflection. Because the true realm that was once was shut down. That's why Adam and Eve were able to see God. They were able to see the serpent. But when they ate of the tree of deception, they no longer could see. Everything became a reflection now. And we live in a realm of reflection. Does everybody understand this? So in this realm of reflection, which the enemy uses to deceive us, he has a form of godliness. He has a form of what is good. See, that's why when people, and you, people eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but not of the tree of life, they stay in that deception of reflection because good has a sense of light, but it's not the true light. So everybody got this? You know, I, I keep stepping back and go, my gosh, Lord, how come our country is so blinded? How come it's so blinded? Why are people so blinded? And especially people go to church are so blinded. Why are they so blinded? What, what, what is this? And he said, because they're still eating of the tree of good and evil. They're still eating of the tree of good and evil, but they think it's him. But it's only a reflection of him. Even though they go to church. Amen? Even though they go to church, they leave church and they go eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because it has a form of godliness, but it really isn't. So they l still listen to music that's perversive. They still do things that are perversive or, or they watch certain things that are perversive or they, uh, they still drink and they still watch pornography. They still use drugs. They still whatever. They vote for politicians that promote same sex. They promote for politicians that promote abortion. It's got nothing to do with the individual, it's to do with the fruit. Or they vote for politicians that they can get something for nothing. But really, that's a deception, isn't it? Is everybody okay? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, deception's reflection. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Is everybody okay? Everybody getting this? In verse 1. It says, Oh, that you would bear with me in a little folly, and indeed you do bear with me, for I am zealous for you with godly jealous. I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest some how as the what? Serpent deceived Eve by his what? Craftiness, so that your what? Your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity, or that word means purity, that is in Christ. So in other words, he's saying here, look at The serpent deceived the woman of the purity of the truth, reflecting to be the light and truth, but truly not. Amen? Is everybody okay with... Many come with the reflection of Christ and... and he warns us that in the latter days that many will come in my name, won't they? Believe me, I, I've talked to people that were Christian, supposedly. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I love Jesus. But see, who you love is who you serve. But yet they don't serve. This is a deception. What you serve is what you believe. And what you believe is what you follow. This is a deception when individuals go another way. And this is that reflection that portrays to be a light, but isn't truly the light. 
See, God's true light doesn't promote pride. It promotes humility. God's true light doesn't promote division. It promotes unity. God's true light doesn't promote hatred. It promotes love. See, there's a difference. But there is a light that is deceptive and it portrays to be a light, but it's actually deception's reflection. Go to uh, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 2 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Can we speak this together, please? For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea. And for many have, have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. This I say, lest any should what? Deceive you with what? Persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, Yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through what? Philosophy. In this philosophy, it's an arena of compromise. It's an area of compromise. See, one of the things the enemy likes to do is get us to compromise. And I want you to know what he wants to compromise. He wants you to know that he wants you to get you to a place to compromise deception's reality. If he can get you to compromise deception's reality, he can keep you in a state of deception. Rooted and built up in him and established in faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of who? Men. Things that have been passed down the family line. Things that have been brought forth because these are teachings of reflection. How many of all know Darwin's theory is a teaching of reflection? In fact, most of the stuff you learn in school is a teaching of reflection. Until you come to the truth. According to the base, let's read verse 8 together. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. The basic principles of the world. Well, the world now is ruled by the ruler of who? Darkness. Who is a reflection of the light. So everything is a reflection of truth. It is a form of truth, but it is not the truth. We live in a realm of reflection. In verse 9, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Words that promote false vision. They try to disqualify our faith and put our faith into the reflection instead of into the truth. Amen. Again, we talked about three areas of faith, which is spiritual sight. 
Faith that believes, that means follow. And faith that acts. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter two. In verse thirteen. Let's speak it together. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in the what? Faith. faith the three areas. And then there's faith, love, and holiness with what? Self-control. In other words, Adam was formed first, wasn't he? Eve was from Adam. <clears throat> a reflection of the image and likeness of Christ. So everybody got it? Adam was made in the image and likeness of God, wasn't he? But in that, he was not God, was he? But he carried the truth. So he was a reflection of the true light. But there is a reflection of the false light, isn't there? And this is what we must be careful of. That's why the Bible warns us that many will come in the latter days saying, I'm this, I'm that, and will prophesy. They'll have signs. They'll have wonder. Many people are going to fall into deception right now. In fact, they have fallen already into deception. They've fallen into a religious state. They've lost relationship with the true light. The truth. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? There's only one way. That's why he says, abide in me and I'll abide in you. Why? So we don't keep walking in an area of deception. We don't keep looking at things as a reflection because of a false light or a false truth. Well, he's a good person. Well, good people eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and either that produce death. Because it's a false reflection, isn't it? Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19, 19, 19, 19. Would you speak it with me, please? Revelation 19 and verse 19. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him, Christ who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet. Hold on, if he's a false prophet, what's he doing? He's reflecting what? The false light, isn't he? And with him the false prophet, who did what? Worked signs in his presence, by which he did what? He deceived those who who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his what? Image or his reflection. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Again, it, they were deceived to receive the mark, to worship the image or the reflection of the light, but it wasn't the true light. These people were deceived. There are people deceived right now. I'm telling you, there are people who are willing to take the mark right now. We don't even have to get to that area. 
or those traumas that are coming. There are people willing to take the mark right now because they are so deceived. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, because they believe in the reflection, they follow the reflection. It's like a projected hollow images. They follow it. Second Corinthians 11, is everybody there? In verse 12. Paul was beginning, beginning to get irritated on the arena of people trying to imitate him. In verse 12, he said, But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity of those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such as false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So we see that Satan, who is an angel of light, all reflections, these false reflections of, have a form of truth, but it's not truth. You know, the enemy loves to mix truth with deception. Just a little bit of truth. In 1 Corinthians 15. You know, the world has a sense that if a person is wealthy, they're a good person. Oh, they're wealthy. They must be good people. We don't judge anything except by the fruit. I want to be just like them because they're wealthy, even though they rob banks. <laughs> oh, but they're really good people. Regardless of what they do. Oh, they sell drugs. But they're good people. I, I believed I was a good person because I sold drugs. I was a demonic Robin Hood. I used to help everybody. Yeah, I used to help them get addicted. Here, you need a job here. Go sell this. I thought I was employing them, helping them out. Problem was, most of the time they couldn't pay back. So I had paper pyramid. I retired on paper. Because I was deceived. Totally deceived. Thought I was doing good. I'm not hurting anyone. Everybody has a free choice. But that's a deception. Yes, we have the choice but we have to choose what's, choose what's pleasing him and displeasing him. There's the two choices. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, 33. Let's speak it. Do not be what? Deceived, evil, company, corrupts, good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. This I speak to their shame. God says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There are too many who proclaim to be believers that are in deception. Way too many. And the church must awaken. It first starts with us, then our household. Those we know. Us, our household, and those we know. 
us, our household, and those we know. So that they can awake to righteousness and come out of deception's reflection of self-righteousness and still eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Evil company corrupts. Yeah, good friend of mine, man. Good friend of mine. Yeah, well, he, he lives with his partner. Hey, listen, God did not create Adam and Steve, right? He created Adam and Eve. Well, it, it's okay. I see believers that say that, well, you know, it's my child. It's okay. No, it isn't. It's not okay. Does everybody got it? It's not okay. It doesn't mean you don't love them, but you don't approve of it. You don't approve of it. It doesn't mean you don't love them because you're praying for them, but you do not approve of it because what you approve of, you'll be judged by. Is everybody okay? Praise God. In 1 Corinthians 13, It is shameful not to know the truth of Satan's deceptions. Has everybody got that? How can we say that we are believers and still not know Satan's deceptions and the depths of his deception? There are some people who proclaim to be believers. You mention a demon, a devil, or Satan. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Don't say anything about him. I might irritate him. Then he'll be on me. Don't worry about it. He's in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> Is everybody there? Verse 12. Oh, let's start at verse 11. And now uh, let's start at verse 9. Let's speak it. For we what? We know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a what? Mirror. What's a mirror do? It reflects. Dimly, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide in what? Faith, hope, love. And these three, but the greatest of these is love. Revelation chapter 2. Deception's reflection. Revelation two twenty four. Let's speak it together. Now to you I say. And to, you, to the rest of Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel as I also have received from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. See, they didn't know the depths of Satan. 
Again, Satan wants the believer to compromise the reality of deception. To compromise it. Again, he doesn't want you to know that he's involved in your every decision. I said, he doesn't want you to know that he's involved in your every decision. Jesus was the only one who says Satan didn't have anything in him. Because you and I were born in darkness. So he's got something in us. He's got access to your old man. In fact, your old man is the offspring of Satan. So everybody got it. The Bible says that we were born in iniquity. We were born blinded. And his purpose is to keep us blinded. His purpose is to try to resurrect his child. So everybody got it. He wants to resurrect his child in anything and in everything. So that his child becomes obedient to him. So that his child reflects his image and likeness. Because it is a false reflection, doesn't it? It ref reflects the false light, but it's not the true light. That's where all of these religions are, if you ever notice. These new age movements, all of these religions, they have a form of light, but it isn't the true light. They always talk about you, the power of you. Well, you and I don't have any power. It's called soulish power, which is nothing but emotion. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not our own. Amen? Satan greatest weapon is deception and it is a weapon and it's vitally important that we begin to recognize deception's reflection amen in 2 Corinthians 3 Hallelujah. In verse 17. Let's speak it together. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty or freedom. So if there's any other spirit there, what is it? Bondage. There it is, plain and simple. We can go home. <laughs> this is reality, man. This is it. Any other spirit will bring bondage. <laughs> Verse 19. But we all with what? Unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. You know, the Word tells us that we are waiting to be transformed into His glory. Because right now we're still walking in the reflection. Has so everybody got it? But His Spirit that's within us is allowing me and you to overcome the faults of the realm that we live in. So that we can see through. Waiting to, for the fullness of our redemption. Waiting for our glorified body. Waiting to get rid of this stupid mind. Waiting for the fullness of Him. The Bible tells us that when we awake, we will be just like Him. But in the meantime, we are battling through this realm. We are battling through the lies and the deception we are battling through the false reflections of light. We are battling through it. That's why the word tells us, make no place for the devil. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't touch anything that's unclean. Why? Because it's going to access you. Because what a man believes is what he follows. And what he follows is what he serves. 
And if your belief system, of course, is flawed, then your perception is flawed. It is incorrect. Because your perception is what you believe. So everybody got it. And if your perception of things is incorrect, you'll believe every reflection of false, false light. Every false reflection there is. You'll believe everything. But you won't be able to see through to the truth behind everything. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. James chapter 1. The devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and what? Destroy. James chapter 1. Verse 21. Is everybody there? <laughs> James 1, 21. Let's read it together. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Why? Because the word is truth. It's light. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a what? Mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. There it talks about that reflection of the mirror. We have a teaching called, Who's in Your Mirror? <laughs> Sometimes we need to look to find out who's in our mirror. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians 2. In verse 9, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, let's speak it together. But as it is written, the eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things of God, yes, the what? Deep things of God. So how are you going to see through the reflections of deception? Only by the what? Spirit. He's the only one that reveals the truth. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Because He is the Spirit of truth. He is the only one. That's why it's so vitally important to get in the Spirit. Because if you're not in the Spirit, you can't receive the things of the Spirit. And you still look at all the reflections of deception. And you'll follow something that is not true. It's just not true. You know, the Bible says truth makes us free. But of course, practicing truth is what makes us free. You may know the truth, but choose not to practice it. Then you're not free. So in this, where the Spirit of the Lord is, so we must maintain His presence at all costs. So that any reflection of deception that is there, as for deception's reflection, we can see through it. We can see through it. We can see through it. That voice that comes to try to deceive us, to bring an image, we can see through it. We can see through it. We can see through it. We don't agree with it. We expose it. 2 Corinthians 4. It 
2 Corinthians 4. Verse 16. Let's speak it together. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. Therefore we do not lose what? Heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward, inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen. Why? We don't look at the things that are seen because they're what? Reflection. Haven't we been deceived long enough? We cannot compromise the reality of deception. People are going to compromise the reality that there is deception or the weapon of deception and begin to walk away. They'll begin to follow the voice of deception that promotes division, strife, fear, anxiousness, criticism, accusations, bitterness. And self. It will put that person in a self mode of survival instead of surrender. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things that are not seen. The only way you're going to see the things that are not seen is to be in the spirit. Other than that, you'll be deceived. Amen? For the things which are seen are what? Temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So the things that are, were seen are a reflection, aren't they? But you and I must see through. Now I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians 11. Deceptions, reflections. This is where we judge ourselves. Who are we imitating? <laughs> Verse 1. He says what? Imitate me. Just as I also imitate Christ. Now, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions which I have delivered them to you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of every woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Imitate him. If you're reflecting Christ, you're following the light, the true light. If you're not, if you're still doing those things that bring contamination, if you're still doing those things that promote self and pride, if you're still in survival mode, if your tongue is like a rudder, spe and speaking the right things, <laughs> hello, speaking the words of encouragement and edification not speaking the words of destruction this is the areas are we truly imitating Christ if we're not we're deceived it's real simple if you're not imitating Christ you're deceived and there is no but ministry but 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 that's a compromise of deception has everybody got it? You're compromising the reality of deception then. Do not compromise the reality of deception.